Thousands upon thousands and millions upon millions of flaming creatures with such glory. If one of them were to appear in this room right now, it would strike us all dead with its beauty. Millions, countless of them, serve Him constantly, praise Him constantly. He needs nothing from you. So Him calling you to Himself and Him asking you to come and serve is not a need to be fulfilled. He's offering you a prayer privilege. A privilege. The greatest act of judgment that God can pour out on a people is being poured out on America. And it is this. He's taken away the knowledge of God. And He's closed the mouth of those who are supposed to be speaking for Him. So that little boys lead us with their silly little ideas. And we like it that way. Because we really do want our best life now. But God, the true God, He acknowledges who He is. And so does all of heaven. And He offers you the privilege to know Him, to enter into a relationship with Him, and to follow Him with everything. He goes on and he says this. Notice in verse 6 that he is speaking to the priests who despise his name. A priest. What is the purpose of a priest? The priests, the Levitical priesthood, they received the greatest privilege of all of Israel. Of all the tribes of Israel, they were granted the greatest privilege of them all. Sir, let, let Issachar and others go out and gain great wealth. Let Judah be strong and mighty with muscle and battle and sword and steel. But the Levites were given the greatest of all gift, and that is the presence of God. But isn't it amazing? We're just like them, aren't we? We would rather have the wealth of Issachar and the muscle of Judah and the prosperity that we know to be our own we'd even rather have missions and ministry than to have God just God they were granted the greatest privilege anyone has ever known prior to you because you have been granted a greater privilege. For in the new covenant, they are all priests of God. For in the new covenant, in every one dwells the Spirit of God. In the new covenant, everyone is allowed to come as near as he desires. Now the priests here say this, they say, how have we despised your name? Isn't it amazing? We never know what's wrong with us. We never know what's wrong with us. We can so easily spot the tiniest error in the life of another man. But we ourselves can commit the greatest atrocities against God, the most heinous crimes, and be totally, totally ignorant to it. Until one day God reveals in mercy Himself, His law, His will, and we are struck down in our heart and we realized, oh, what have I done? What have I become? They despised His name and they didn't even know it. You and I do the same. Whenever anything fills our mind more than God, your houses and your homes, your cars and your land, your clothing with expensive emblems on them that you think about so much. Christmas that has been stolen away by a fat elf called Santa. All the things, your hobbies and golf clubs and guns and bows and tree stands and balls that bounce and wobble. All the things that mean so much to you. Only tell everyone one thing, O oh, you priests who have been called to know Him, how you despise His name. I'm not saying this to hurt you. 
I'm saying it because it's true. Were you as excited about this missions conference as you were the football game yesterday? They say, how have we despised your name? He said, you are presenting defiled food upon my altar. But you say, how have we defiled you? And in, in that you say, the table of the Lord is despised. He said, they said, we never said that. We never said the table of the Lord was despised. We would never do anything like that. We're good Christian people. We would never say the Lord's not number one. We would never say that this or that is more important than God. We would never say that. He says, you say it, not with your mouth, but with your life. He says, you say it this way. But when you present the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you present the lame and sick, is it not evil? What does he demand from us? Everything. I know about these silly little evangelists that say, give me your hand and give Jesus your heart. I know about these silly little preachers that say, come forward and pray this prayer, it only take five minutes. They're lying to you. This is what it'll cost you. Your life. Your life. Jesus promises you two things. A cross to die on and eternal life. He's everything or he's nothing. The saddest place on the earth is the biblical south where everyone has just enough of religion to send them straight to hell to soothe their religious conscience and not know that they're despising the Lord and that they have so many idols in their life that the Lord is not even first or second or third or fourth. It is not giving unto the Lord Everything. Everything. What would you have me to do, O Lord? Teach me your ways, O Lord. Who do I have in heaven but Thee? Who do I have on earth but Thee? What am I but a speck of dust, breathing holy breath, if indeed you have converted me? How then shall we live, was the question of Francis Schaeffer. Knowing who He is, what we were in our filth and our sin, what He has done through the cross of Jesus Christ, and what discipleship demands, how then shall we live? I know we are a man-centered people and we think it's all about us, but we are wrong. I love what the old Dutch Reformed theologian Abraham Kuyper used to say. Facing the humanism and the man-centered religion that was so prevalent even in his day, he stood before a group of men and he said this, I want you men to know what Jesus Christ is going to do when He comes back. He is going to stretch forth His hand and grasp everything that is and He's going to say, Mine, 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 mine! It's all mine. It's always been mine. It was created for me, for my glory, and for my good pleasure. And the only ones that are going to enter into the heavens are the ones that have realized that from the start. It's all about Him. For a lot in America today, Jesus... If I see one more Southern Baptist church with a sign out front that says salvation so easy a caveman can do it, I think I'm going to be thrown in jail. Blasphemy! So easy a caveman can do it. So difficult is our salvation that only God can make it possible. Do you think he's a flu shot? I could talk to most Southern Baptists and talk to them about salvation. They'd say, don't worry about me. I done did that. You done did what? Well, I took care of that a long time ago. If you're not taking care of it today, you didn't take care of it a long time ago. The evidence that you repented unto salvation one time ago, a long time ago, is you are still repenting today and growing in repentance.